Aloha and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you about the astrology and galactic astrology of the Gemini new moon on June 6, 2024. And we're going to be doing something new. We're going to be looking at the new moon for each of the rising signs, showing you where it's happening in your chart and what kinds of things you might expect and how to best use this for your highest good and your healing, your empowerment, the kinds of synchronicities that can land for you. And we're also at the end, I will pull a card from a brand new Oracle card deck. It's called Beyond Lemuria by Izzy Ivy. It is so beautiful and so fitting for this new moon because as we will see shortly, the Lemurian energy is strong. Before we dive into the astrology, I just want to be sure I invite you to the upcoming Gemini New Moon Distant Reiki Share. It will be on Friday, June 7th at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. That is 11 a.m. Pacific time. Check your time zone. See if you're able to be there. It's a free event. You can RSVP on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com, and it's open to everybody, whether or not you have experience or training in Reiki or astrology you are welcome and it will be such a joy to have you there and just the most beautiful circle of sacred soul family. All right, so first we are going to explore the astrology and galactic astrology of the new moon and then we will go into each of the rising signs. So definitely be sure you stay for this part and don't just go to your rising sign just yet, which I will have time stamped below. This new moon is occurring, like I said, on June 6th. And it is at 16 degrees Gemini and 18 minutes. So you can see the sun and the moon together in the sign of Gemini. And what a beautiful new moon this is. Every new moon is a wonderful time to plant a seed of a new intention for the moon cycle ahead. And it can even be farther ahead than that. But thinking really about the next 28 days and then understanding that working with the new moons with your intention, they aggregate, they build upon one another. You will see some fruition within the next 28 days. And then it goes beyond that as well to the next six months where there will be the Gemini full moon during Sagittarius season. And it repeats like this every year. So the longer you do this work, the more awesome it is, and that's why I choose to do the distant Reiki shares when I do them. So it's a new beginning in the sign of Gemini. The sign of Gemini is an air sign, mutable air. So it's air that's uncontained, it's unbound, it's unlimited. This is intellectual, this is curious, versatile, dynamic, adaptable, very communicative, writing, speaking, teaching, information, dissemination, chatting can be a lot of mental activity, mental energy, friendliness, getting to know your local environment more, issues with siblings, with neighbors, with your local community can all highlight during this time. And so there's an opportunity for new beginnings within all of those areas that I just mentioned, all of those topics I just mentioned. The new moon is conjunct Regal star in Orion constellation. And this is a star that is about knowledge and learning, the educator. It's in constellation Orion, which for the ancient Egyptians was God in the sky. Regal is in the foot of Orion. And this was linked to protection from the pharaoh. 
and protection in the spiritual realms of the leaders, of the ones who have the power. So there is this sort of sense of invisible protection that is coming through whatever endeavors you may be starting, whatever seeds you may be planting at this time may have something to do with knowledge, learning, teaching, authorities, and the protection that comes with that. Protection from your teachers, protection from the elders and from your guides in the invisible realm. So really, really beautiful galactic energy to be streaming through this new moon. You will also see it's exactly conjunct Venus. So there's this influx of this divine feminine energy that's very much a part of this new moon. And how wonderful we've had Venus and Taurus and now Venus and Gemini very versatile, very dynamic, wants to do a lot of things, is valuing information. Venus in Gemini values information, conversation, getting to know you, technology, learning, expanding the mental horizons. So this is like a love of learning. And it can, again, highlight those relationships with siblings, with community, with neighborhoods, and bring some sweetness and freshness and sense of harmony and balance within those relationships as well here. Venus and Gemini is delighting in information and learning and teaching and speaking and communicating and socializing. This is like the social butterfly Venus and Gemini. Venus and Gemini is also conjunct the star Regal in Orion constellation. So that is doubling down on that symbolism of Regal that I mentioned. And also this powerful opportunity to heal any kind of trauma signatures from Orion in terms of our galactic experiences and experiences beyond the earth with Orion star beings, the Orion light star beings, the enlightened beings of Orion can be of service and be of assistance to us, helping us in our relationships, helping us in our self-worth, helping us value the knowledge and wisdom and information that each of us uniquely carries as well. And being a channel, being able to listen and receive that information through Venus. So this is a wonderful time to be in the listening and you can really learn a lot and expand your knowledge through the listening and through the receiving. This new moon in Gemini is ruled by planet Mercury, which we can see here at 6 degrees, 29 minutes of the sign of Gemini. So Mercury rules the sign of Gemini and is in Gemini. So this is speedy. This is quick. Mercury is the quickest planet. There's an ease of information. This can be that busy mind. Again, so being sure to be grounded and take some breaths. Gemini in the lungs. Expand the lungs. Inhale. Exhale. Tune in, slow down, very, very important here. And Mercury is aligned with the stars of the Hyades. And these are very beautiful stars within Taurus, the bull constellation. These stars are in the face of the bull and they have to do with these kinds of waves of loss, of grief, of sorrow, of flow, riding the flow of our emotional body, because these are the sisters of the Pleiades, and they were the daughters of Atlas. They had a brother named Hyas who was killed by a lion who became Leo constellation. He was killed and the sisters were so sad that they cried and cried and their tears brought the rains and their tears became 
the hundreds of stars of the Hyades. From a galactic perspective, they are very linked to the Pleiades. So many people will feel connected to the Pleiades, but not necessarily have Pleiades alignments in their chart. They may have Hyades or vice versa. So the genetics of the Hyades and the Pleiades are very mixed and contact with either being can kind of feel like a unified merge situation here. With Mercury aligned to the star, there can be some kind of grief, some kind of release process. I've been noticing a lot this a lot lately with people I'm talking to, they're experiencing one thing or another, or maybe multiple things that are needing to wash through, whether that's a loss or something from earlier in life, other lifetimes. This could be more of a less personal collective grief process that's flowing through. And just to be aware of that, hold space for that, acknowledge the sacredness of that. And this can also be a good opportunity with Mercury aligned here to connect with enlightened Hyadian star beings, enlightened Pleiadian star beings as well, may be very present in this new moon in the period leading up to it as well. You can see I included some other things in the chart here. We have Mars and Aries still conjunct Andromeda galaxy, bringing us an influx of this Andromedan energy very present, this galaxy that is our closest one to us. So Andromedan souls may feel a big activation of life force energy at this time. And Andromedan reality is really about manifestation and fluidity and flow and being in the flow, moving with the flow and has more of that instantaneous manifestation quality. So there may be some of that. And also what actions do you need to take to be in flow? And how can you direct your energy effectively to be in that flow, receiving those blessings and being a powerful co-creator of those manifestations you're bringing in? Mars is also opposite dwarf planet Haumea and making this T-square with Pluto at the early degrees of Aquarius. And so for the next days following the new moon, Mars will still be in this T-square formation and actually perfecting its square with Pluto. So this is a very dynamic kind of day here. I think this is one of those dates I probably mentioned in my Pluto and Aquarius class <laughs> earlier this year when Mars is in hard aspect to Pluto and Aquarius. And this is like a lot of galactic energy coming in. Pluto still aligned with Altair star in Aquila, the Eagle constellation, Mars aligning to Andromeda, Haumea, one of the dwarf planets beyond the orbit of Neptune. Pluto is our first dwarf planet, a binary, in binary with his moon. Haumea is beyond Pluto, and it's actually a part of a collision family of these bodies out in space that are all in orbit together. And she has this egg shape about her symbolizing that fertility and regeneration, birth, rebirth, what comes after the death or the loss that may be brought in by Pluto. Haumea is bringing that what is next. And I learned about her in Dwarf Planet University, where Alan Clay leads a wonderful group class on the dwarf planets. And she is a wonderful symbol of New Earth, as Pam Gregory is always talking about. I know that was the first dwarf planet I really wanted to learn about because she's linked to Hawaii. She's linked to this goddess who can give birth out of all parts of her body. And I mean, how amazing is that? And to be able to shape shift as well and change her form. And in the sign of Scorpio, like really being able to 
do that and do that within the waters, do that within the depths of the collective unconscious opposite Mars in this T-square with Pluto. This is extremely powerful. And I was very curious too, because she has this more earth goddess side of her. She's becoming the water goddess here now in Scorpio, but she also has a fire goddess aspect. And this comes in the form of one of her daughters, Pele. So I drew Pele into this chart. Pele is an asteroid. So she's a Hawaiian goddess that rules the volcanoes and the lava and some of that kind of like underworld, fiery, passionate kundalini energy. Asteroid Pele is actually making a grand trine here. I love when I'm guided to look at things and I see the alignments like this. This is a harmonious flow of energy between this powerful fire goddess in the sign of Aquarius with our new moon and Venus in the sign of Gemini and trining through to our south node of the moon in Libra that is conjunct Algarab star in Corvus constellation. This is the crow. So there is a depth of soul power and information. These are all air signs, communications that can come through our bodies and our being and our intellect, our imagination, our clear senses, our clear cognizance, our clear intellect, if we will stop and listen and receive as Venus our listening is a part of this grand trine here. So this is incredibly powerful dynamic aspect here that reinforces this T-square with Pluto, Mars, and Haumea. What's also very interesting is that I drew in the asteroid Hawaii, and this is very linked to the Lemurian consciousness. At this point, and I may change my mind because I am a Gemini moon and I do have Jupiter in Gemini. At this point, I really do resonate with the idea that Hawaii is the exposed, one of the last physical remnants of Mu of Lemuria. I definitely resonate with that. And it's feeling like this asteroid called Hawaii can be an astrological indicator or clue of other more mundane things about Hawaii, but also at this deeper, more esoteric level can be connected to that Lemurian culture, which was so like divine feminine balance in oneness with the earth, with the beauty, with the grounding, the lightness of being, not really needing food, existing off of the life force and the prana. And we see that Hawaii is in conjunction with Mercury, the ruler of this new moon. So there could be this influx of this Lemurian consciousness that is part of this seed we are planting at this time. And is part of this powerful transformation we are being gifted at this time for those who are wanting to awaken into more of that Lemurian consciousness the divine feminine, the connection to the earth, but it's also a very divine connection to the divine, seeing self as divine, the body is divine, the land, the water, all of nature is divine, being in that unification consciousness with all of nature, and then extending that out beyond to the rest of the solar system and the cosmos to being very in touch with those non-physical realms. This is making me think of Mars conjunct Andromeda galaxy as well. In Lemurian times, it was a very, it was physical, but it was less physical 
then we are now more of that light body, more of that jello or jelly-like existence where there wasn't the hardness of the Saturn and the structure and more of that masculine energy. So this is a wonderful time to kind of like, you know, snuggle up into that, that Lemurian consciousness and coziness. And like I said, I'll pull a card so we can get more information on the guidance that wants to come through about Lemuria at this time. Speaking of Saturn and structure, Saturn is in square to the sun, the moon, and Venus. There is this reinforcement of that sense like Mars and Aries conjunct Andromeda galaxy, that manifestation, making it happen, making it real, not just thinking about it, Gemini talking about it or listening about it, actually taking action and being an active co-creator in that manifesting, in that unfoldment of whatever seeds you are planting at this time, the actualization and physicalization of that which you value and that which you are guided to create. This is also more of an internalization of the divine feminine inner authority and valuing your own sense of authority, the knowledge and wisdom, the information, the skill sets that you uniquely hold. It's easy to take that for granted or not be aware of how skilled you are in certain areas. And so to really value what you've been cultivating, what you've been growing and nurturing and trusting that that will be met in the external world, that that will be reflected back to you in very beautiful and aligned, mystical, magical ways, Pisces. So now we are going to move into the new moon in the houses by your rising sign. If you don't know your rising sign, you can just listen for your sun sign or your moon sign if you know that. But if you don't know your rising sign, you probably don't know your moon sign either. So just listen to your sun sign. And you can, if you know your rising sign and your moon sign, listen to those signs as well and see what comes through and connects for you. But that rising sign is really what's most important. And I will be using the whole sign house system. Usually I use Placidus, but for the purpose of this video and this kind of forecast, we will be using the whole sign house system. If you know this new moon is actually not occurring in that house, watch the section that talks about the correct house for you. For example, I'm Sagittarius rising, late degree Sagittarius rising. Often I will watch a video like this and it doesn't have it in the correct house for me. So I end up watching Capricorn rising and it'll have whatever is being talked about in the correct house. So you might need to do that if you are in the later degrees of a sign or if you know like, hey, this is not the correct house. Just listen to that other sign too. So take what resonates, leave the rest. And this is in the spirit of Gemini freshness and mixing things up, keeping it fun and lively. For Gemini rising, this new moon is occurring in your first house of the self. So really wonderful opportunity here to feel very expanded, receiving communications, understanding more about your dreams, your goals, your desires, your values, receiving many blessings in the way of this. This is such a beautiful time to plant a seed of intention for your own growth, your own relationship to yourself, your self-love, the kinds of communications you want to have, the kinds of relationships you want to have, the higher mind studies you wish to embark upon. What is your message? This is a beautiful time to really focus in on more of your message and your unique gifts and talents, values, and creativity as well. 
For Cancer Rising, this new moon is occurring in your 12th house of withdrawal and solitude and spiritual practice and spiritual service. So this is a wonderful time to come to my distant Reiki share <laughs> or otherwise be take some time and space to be alone, to be quiet, to listen, to be still, to give yourself some really sacred nourishment and rest and go deeply within yourself, shamanic journey, meditation, guided visualization, whatever your spiritual practice of choice is, definitely indulge here. Very deep spiritual healing can be coming through as well as I would encourage you this moon cycle and even the next months or however long you may, may be guided to do so, keep a dream journal. A lot can come through in your dream time. Also make note, you may want to try automatic writing if you're doing a Reiki journey, a shamanic journey, the dream diary, what's coming through in your meditations and so on. This can be a really wonderful time for very deep spiritual guidance to come through and have a deep sense of cultivating a relationship with your soul and the hidden parts of yourself. This can be a time to be more aware of those parts and invite those parts to rise into your conscious awareness. This can be a time to set an intention around your spiritual practice, your spiritual service, and how you wish to move forward on your spiritual path at this time. This is all about your deepest sense of spiritual connection. This can also be large animals as well. So the animal kingdom is very much with you at this time. You may feel a greater sense of communication with them. For Leo rising, this is occurring in your 11th house of groups and communities and social networks. So gathering with your friends, gathering with your soul family, surrounding yourself in a group of like-hearted, like-minded individuals where you feel comfortable and you can talk and you can chat and you can discuss and you can access information, knowledge, learning, things that interest you with people you feel connected to. This is a wonderful time of expansion in your community, a sense of powerful humanitarian. What are the causes you really care about? This is a wonderful time to set an intention around those causes, those humanitarian dreams and visions you may have, your relationships, your social networks, the kinds of friendships, groups, and communities that you're looking to be a part of and that feel at home for you and feel like you're you're really growing and expanding in those areas. So definitely wonderful if you don't feel connected to your soul tribe. This can be a time where you plant a seed of intention to connect more fully with your people, whoever they are, who are very focused and geared towards a betterment and upliftment of humanity and a particular cause that lights you up in a very deep soul aligned way. For Virgo rising, this new moon is occurring in your 10th house of your career, your public reputation, your status. So there's a lot of emphasis here. It's a wonderful time to plant a seed of a new intention in these life areas. And really, again, thinking about thinking Mercury, expanding your mind about what your contribution is, what are your gifts and talents, what are your skills and ability, what are your values, how are you sharing those values, what are your work relationships like, there could be changes in your work relationships, or wanting to call in more higher vibrational relationships within your work, within your career, within your professional life, and 
having a sense of greater self-worth and what you are bringing to the table. This could be a time where you are the one who is teaching and bringing forth information and informing people, or you are learning new things that you are incorporating into your professional experience. For Libra rising, this new moon is occurring in your ninth house of travel and higher mind studies, metaphysics, foreign lands and foreign cultures. You could be taking a trip. You could be taking a new course of study. Here you could be learning about something very new and interesting, something that's very aligned with your values and gives you this sense of expansion, expanded possibilities, wonderful time for more of a long distance trip that really lights you up. This could have something to do with children. This also could be something that is more of a work related trip, something that brings you more of a sense of inner authority, inner mastery and alignment with your dreams and goals and visions and higher mind priorities. This could be a time where you're feeling connected to your higher self and a greater sense of your purpose and why you're here and feeling very supported in expressing your purpose at this time. For Scorpio rising, this new moon is happening in your eighth house of mysteries and magic and alchemy and soul and other people's money and other people's energy. So all of these themes and topics can be highlighted. This is a wonderful time to start a new course of study in esoteric subjects, spiritual subjects, astrology, and so on. And this could be very expansive for you, there could be an expanded awareness and understanding of the true nature of reality, how things work, how you are in relationship to the invisible realms, in relationship to your most intimate relationships, and getting more in touch with your soul. This is a wonderful time to plant a seed of intention to connect more fully, more deeply with your soul so that you can bring forward those gifts, that information, creatively express that, express more of your authentic self in ways that feel really fulfilling and true for you. For Sagittarius rising, this is occurring in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships and partnerships. So this is a great time to set a new intention about the kinds of relationships you want to attract, the kinds of clients you want to work with, the consultations you want to work with. Maybe it's help you need, or maybe you are the consultant and just thinking about all the different roles that you're in, the way you are showing up and being of service, who you're talking to, a lot of different ideas and exchange could be occurring within this next lunar cycle. And this could be a quest for more information and more ways to connect in ways that feel very aligned to the deepest and truest parts of you. There's really powerful communication that can come through in your relationships and when you're actually able to talk it out with somebody else different. Blessings can come out, gems, jewels, like these things you say that you're like, wow, I wouldn't have said that unless this person had kind of sparked that in me. And blessings coming to you through other people and through your relationships and through these different interactions you're having. For Capricorn rising, this new moon is occurring in your sixth house of health. So this is a wonderful time to create an intention that is focused on your health and healthy habits and mental health as well. This is also about your day-to-day -day routine. So you may feel like a whole lot is going on, a lot is being asked of you. So this is a wonderful time to concentrate your energy inward so you're not feeling as scattered to take very good care of your health, of your nervous system, to slow down, to breathe and take deep breaths and really 
understand that what you're doing in the day to day, although it may feel like an endless to do list, it's really geared to bring in some abundance in the long term and is really, it can be a wonderful use of your energy. So anything that's not a wonderful use of your energy or a wonderful use of your mind and your communications, go ahead and let that go and be thinking of the long term in how the little day-to-day -day breakdown hour by hour is going that actually this is contributing to a longer term vision that you've set that's actually quite practical and grounded and responsible. Aquarius rising is having this new moon in your fifth house of joy and pleasure and children and romance. So this is a wonderful time to set an intention around bringing in more joy, more fun, more light, more levity, more playfulness, more adventure in your life and expressing yourself authentically. Maybe there's something, some information you want to share in a really creative and magical kind of way to have fun with that and not take it too seriously and be lighthearted as you maybe step out of your comfort zone and share and express some things that maybe you haven't shared in the past. You've been a bit reserved about it, but really it's like, go for it. There's some depth of understanding and growth that you've gone through that can really value others and in creating from that space, this can be really healing for you and helpful to others too. Pisces rising. This is occurring in your fourth house of home and family, your roots, your sense of grounding and connection to the earth. So this is a wonderful time to, to be at home, to be with family, to go within, to really nurture yourself, nourish yourself, take really good care. This can be an intuitive, psychic, mystical kind of time for you where maybe you are learning more about your roots and your ancestry and are guided to make an intention that has to do with home, your land, your roots, your ancestry, your family. This can also be like improving your home, expanding your home, thinking about your family, expanded family, and really feeling the sense of value and blessings within your home, and also thinking about your body as your home, your human vessel as your home, and treating yourself with kindness and reverence. This is a wonderful time to ground and connect with the earth and be in nature, even if it feels like maybe it's like very busy at home and there's a whole lot to do and there's a lot of movement to find time and space to kind of tune in, go within, and listen for your needs as well, and make sure you are taking care of yourself, not just everybody else. Aries rising, this is occurring in your third house of communication and siblings and short distance travel. So this could be a wonderful time where you are kind of buzzing around and being a social butterfly and communicating a lot. This can be an expanded sense of communications, maybe you're channeling, maybe you're just, you're receiving lots of emails and texts and other kinds of communications at this time. And it's a great moment to set a new intention around what is the kind of communication and the kind of mental environment you want to cultivate, what kinds of courses of study, what kind of learning, what do you want to be tuning into to help you with that and to be discerning with that as well, cutting away anything that is distracting or kind of low vibe, pulling you down. And really a lot of this depth of wisdom and inner authority can be trickling through. So keeping a dream journal, whenever you journey or meditate, taking some notes, you have bright ideas coming through, have your phone handy, have a little notebook you carry around with yourself, jot some things down, 
many different information and downloads and data sets can come through you. And this could ultimately help you feel a greater sense of nourishment and nurturance and family. This could improve your relationships and also strengthen your creativity and your sense of knowledge and wisdom at this time. And take care if it does seem like very noisy to be quiet and be still also and take some breaks from the busyness of the communication and the day-to-day hassle and wrestle and rigmarole of what's going on. This is like being in the present moment too. For Taurus rising, this new moon is occurring in your second house of finances and possessions, your gifts, your talents, your skills, your abilities. So there can be greater awareness about what those are. Maybe you're taking a new course to develop additional skills, gifts, and talents, interests, things that make you feel expanded. There can be an expansion of your resources and more emphasis and focus on how you are using your own energy, how you are using your resources. Maybe there's a lot more that's there because Jupiter and Venus are there. So know that you have this powerful attraction and magnification, magnetization energy around you in terms of your resources. So make sure your mind is attuned to that and isn't in some kind of scarcity vibration, but is in more of that abundance frequency, because you have the power and the support to really bring in resources, bring in value, value what you know, share what you know, and really cultivate a stronger sense of self love and self worth affirmations could be really helpful at this time. So the next thing I want to do for you all is to share the card that I pulled from the Beyond Lemuria deck. So it is this one, fire, and I'm going to put it up on screen so you can see it better because it is so gorgeous. So this card makes me think of Mars and Aries conjunct Andromeda galaxy in that T-square with Pluto and Hame. It also makes me think of Pele and Aquarius in the fire goddess in that grand trine with the new moon and Venus and also with the south node of the moon and there's this sense of really powerful kundalini energy available to us a sense of passion there's so much gemini there's so much air but it's showing that underneath the surface there's actually quite a lot of fire here as well so i'm going to read to you from the book what this card indicates and when i pulled it i asked for the highest guidance for everybody watching this video so Take what resonates and leave the rest. Fire, sublime, duality, creation, kundalini, the rising phoenix, bringing conflict into harmony, intensity, transformation, the incredibleness of being alive, coalescence, infinite energy. We live in a dualistic world of light and dark, yin and yang, masculine and feminine, Focusing only on light can repress our shadows, bringing both sides into balance and being real with our humanness allows us to reach more joy, authenticity, and depth. By accepting and loving all of ourselves as we truly are, we can extend more of this love and have deeper compassion with others. This painting portrays the balanced dance of creation. The greater the distance of separation, of duality, the greater the density. As the dragons come together, they dissolve into one with all that is. In this place of coalescence, the fusion brings both sides together in oneness, not just as a re-merging with the universe, but in an alchemical process of becoming the empowered creator force we truly are. Passion, motivation, destruction, Power, illumination, determination, inner light, forging forward, and transformation are the themes. So in reading, I was immediately aware of like the duh, (laughs) Gemini, 
we have the two dragons here in that duality. Well, really, it looks like another set of two here. The duality, the polarity, Gemini is a dual sign. It's about that duality and really being able to hold a lot of different perspectives and be fluid and flexible in our ideas, in our communications, and also traveling between the realms. Mercury is the psychopomp. He is a child of Jupiter, child of Saturn, child of Uranus in myth. And Mercury was one of the beings who was able to travel between all the realms, no problem. And so as we navigate duality, as we navigate polarity, we can let this burn in the furnace of emotional intensity. And I work with the holy fire. And I know some of you who watch these videos and are a part of my soul family, you all work with holy fire too. So welcoming that holy fire to be a part of this healing, this empowerment, and to be a part of igniting, it's like an ignition of that holy fire, an ignition of our passion, an ignition of our ability to navigate duality skillfully and to reach a greater sense of integration and wholeness and an activation of our inner technology within this amazing body, the human body, and within this amazing, intelligent planet Earth in this awareness that like everybody's walking around, they themselves as this powerful technology on this extremely abundant, beautiful, powerful planet as well. So I would like to end this video just by sharing again, please come to the June 7th Distant Reiki Share if you would like to and if that time works for you. And I will be teaching Holy Fire Reiki 1 and 2. So this is appropriate for beginners or maybe you've taken a Reiki class in a different lineage you want to take in Holy Fire. You are welcome to join the class on June 20th, 21st. All of my information is on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I look forward to connecting to you more soon and wishing you a very happy and blessed and abundant Gemini new moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.